to the Harvard Health Minute. I'm Dr. Terry Schrader. Opioid prescription pain medication is very helpful, but it's also causing enormous problems with addiction and even deaths. If you've ever been prescribed Percocet, Vicodin, or Oxycontin, you know they need to be taken with care and caution. To help us with these issues today is Dr. Winnie Armand, Assistant Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. Welcome, Dr. Armand. Thank you very much. Tell us about this problem. We know that addiction has always been a problem in many societies. What is unique about the prescription opioid medication problem? Well, one of the issues, Terry, is that recently there have been an increase in the number of prescriptions given to patients. So that has contributed to the number of people taking them. And because of the medication causing sometimes tolerance, sometimes physical dependence, this can all contribute to addiction. The problem is enormous. And if we read the headlines, we know 44 deaths a day from prescription opioid overdoses in the U.S. alone. What um, kinds of programs does the federal government and other organizations have in place to try to combat this? Well, they are increasing surveillance and monitoring, so keeping track of who's giving them, who's getting them, where they're filling them in terms of these pills. But also, uh, there is an increased um, effort to make available treatment centers, as well as education of both the public as well as physicians who may prescribe medication-assisted therapy for di addiction. So for patients who might be having a problem, what do you tell them? Well, that there are several treatment choices. Um, it may be counseling. Um, it may be medication in addition to counseling for people who have more of a severe addiction. So the medications that are available, right now there are three FDA-approved long-term medication therapies, including methadone, um, buprenorphine, which is the agent in Suboxone, and naltrexone. How does naltrexone differ from methadone and Suboxone? So methadone and Suboxone bind to the receptors in our body, and they actually turn them on a little bit. So um, people who have an addiction will have less withdrawal, less craving, but they're still able to function and have a productive life. Um, naltrexone blocks these receptors so that um, if you were to take a medication, an opioid, it would no longer turn on these receptors. Addiction is a chronic disease often. Relapse is an issue. What type of patient would most benefit from either of these drugs or just a counseling approach? I think that we've found uh, that patients who have more of a severe addiction oftentimes need a longer-term treatment and have more success with medication-assisted therapies. Um, in terms of who would benefit from naltrexone, which is now available as a long-acting monthly injection form, uh, it would be somebody who either has failed methadone and suboxone or can't be on these uh, medications that actually uh, activate these receptors because of their job or legal requirements, or just the, the person who doesn't want to be physically dependent on uh, a medication. Um, and lastly, the, the patient who has gone through recovery but is particularly worried about a relapse because of a, of a stressful time, they may also benefit from naltrexone. So there is hope both in terms of prevention and treatment of opioid abuse. Definitely. I think that the tide is going to turn. And your message to patients about these drugs is what? I think that there is a role for these medications in certain situations, but they do have to be used carefully. And if you need help, there is help out there. There is a lot of resources that we are working on. Terrific. Thank you very much, Dr. Armand. Thank you, Terry.